Hello guys. This is Dr. Rizwan Mirza. Welcome to my channel at Birdologist. Let's discuss a very important and interesting topic today that is urine detail report or urine DR. It is the test used to detect and manage a wide range of disorders, such as urinary tract infections, kidney disease and diabetes. There are different components or characteristics mentioned in urine DR that help us establish diagnosis along with other relevant investigations. Including Color, appearance, pH, specific gravity, protein, glucose, ketones, bilirubin, urobilinogen, nitrites, RBC, WBC, bacteria, crystals and urinary cast. Let's discuss them briefly to know their pattern in normal urine and let's know how their pattern guide us in making a diagnosis. So we begin with color. Normal color of the urine is pale yellow or amber. But some abnormalities may cause urine color to change. Pink or red color indicate blood in urine, which could be due to glomerulonephritis, UTI or stones. Pink, red, brown or black color may be found in myoglobinuria, in which myoglobin which is a protein, comes in the urine in conditions like rhabdomyolysis. Yellow color may indicate bilirubin in urine, due to conditions affecting liver or bile ducts. The appearance of the normal urine is clear or transparent. But if it is turbid or cloudy in appearance, it may indicate the presence of certain substances, such as mucus, white blood cells, or bacteria. If the urine is frothy, it may indicate protein in urine. Then comes a very important component pH of the urine that measures the acidity or alkalinity of urine. Normal urine pH ranges from 4.5 to 8.0, with the average being around 6.0. But if the pH is decreased, it may indicate acidic urine due to diet rich in proteins or volume depletion. If the pH is increased, it may indicate alkaline urine due to diet rich in vegetables and less protein diet, or infection with urease producing bacteria like Proteus which converts urea into ammonia. Then is a very important characteristic, the specific gravity, which measures the concentration of particles in the urine. Normal urine specific gravity typically ranges from 1.005 to 1.025. At 1.010 specific gravity of urine equals to plasma, also called isostenuria. If the specific gravity is raised, more than 1.040, it could be due to presence of extrinsic osmotic agent. Like radio contrast material, glucose, blood cells, bacteria, crystals, protein, or bilirubin. Or it could be raised in conditions with excess ADH, like dehydration or SIADH. If specific gravity is low, like if it is between 1.000 to 1.003, that could be due to excess water excretion like in diabetes insipidus. Or excess water intake in water intoxication, causing urine dilution. Another significant component is protein in urine. Normally urine sample might contain little to no protein, but proteinuria should not exceed 150 mg in 24 hour in adults and 140 mg per meter square in children. The presence of protein greater than this may indicate kidney problems or other conditions, for example glomerulonephritis, diabetes, or genetic disorders. Then is the glucose or sugar in urine, which is not normally seen in urine. So the presence of glucose may be a sign of diabetes or other metabolic disorders. Ketones are also not observed in normal urine. And the presence of urinary ketones acetoacetate and acetone may indicate a metabolic imbalance or a condition like diabetic ketoacidosis or they may appear during fasting, vomiting or strenuous exercise. Then we see bilirubin in urine report but that is not normally present in urine. So its presence may suggest liver or bile duct problems. Then is urobilinogen, which is a colorless pigment produced in the gut from the metabolism of bilirubin. Some urobilinogen is excreted in feces, and the rest is reabsorbed and excreted in the urine. Small amount of urobilinogen is normally present in urine. But their elevated levels may indicate liver or red blood cell disorders. In obstructive jaundice, bilirubin does not reach the bowel, and urinary excretion of urobilinogen is diminished. Then we see a component nitrites in urine DR which are normally not present in urine. Their presence
presence may indicate a urinary tract infection. Then there are some cellular components in urine DR, like erythrocyte or RBCs, which are normally nil to less than 2 RBC per high power field. So their presence is significant, for this purpose they are classified in two categories. First is isomorphic, which have regular shape and contour, and may appear in kidney stones, UTI, bladder cancer or BPH. Second is dysmorphic RBCs, which have a regular shape and contour, and are seen in GN. Another cellular component is leukocytes or white blood cells, which are normally nil to less than 2 to 5 white cells per high power field. Their elevated levels may indicate an infection or inflammation, for example in conditions like UTI, cystitis, which is the bladder infection, prostatitis, acute pyelonephritis or acute interstitial nephritis. Then comes bacteria, which are usually negative in normal urine sample but they may be seen due to urine collection and handling in a non-sterile condition. Positive bacteria along with symptoms, may indicate infection, like UTI or cystitis, if it is found in a non-contaminated, freshly voided, midstream urine and especially if WBC are also present. Then comes the yeast, which is normally negative. The presence of yeast or candida species, in a urine sample, may be seen if there is colonization of the yeast in perineum or urinary catheter or its presence may be related to invasive infections such as pyelonephritis or cystitis or disseminated candidiasis. Then comes crystals, which are also normally not present in a normal urine but their presence may indicate kidney stones. There are different types of crystals that can be found, including calcium oxalate, calcium phosphate, cysteine, struvite or uric acid stones. We have made a detailed video on renal stones, which you can view in our videos, under the name, kidney stones. If you want to see a video on different types of renal stones, we have made a short video which you can view in our short videos, under the name, types of renal stones. To make it easier to find, I will share the link to both the videos in the first comment. Lastly comes the cast, that is formed in distal tubules and collecting ducts. It is a microscopic cluster of particles, wrapped in tam horseful protein matrix, a protein secreted by thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Normally it may not be present or sometimes hyaline cast may be seen in a normal urine. There are different types of urinary cast. Broadly it is divided in two categories first is cellular cast, that includes red cell, leukocyte and epithelial cast. Second is acellular cast, that includes hyaline, granular, fatty and waxy cast. Different cast presence may indicate different conditions. Like for example, RBC cast may be seen in glomerulonephritis. WBC cast may be seen in acute interstitial nephritis. Epithelial cast may be seen in conditions causing tubular damage. Hyaline cast may be seen in a normal urine or may appear in conditions leading to dehydration like strenuous exercise or vomiting. Muddy brown granular cast may be found in acute tubular necrosis. Fatty cast may be found in nephrotic syndrome. Waxy cast may be found in chronic kidney disease. If you want to know more about urinary cast, we have made a short video on urinary cast, which you can view in our short videos, under the name, urinary cast. To make it easier to find, I will share the link to the video in the first comment. To collect proper urine sample, one's aim should be to collect and handle the sample without any contamination. One must take a freshly voided sample of a midstream urine by stopping the flow of urine after a few seconds and then collecting the middle part of the urine stream in a cup. Hope we were able to explain the common but one of the important test. If you have any question or query you can leave us a comment. Subscribe to my channel at YouTube at Gertologist and press the bell icon for updated video. You can also follow my page at Facebook and follow me on Instagram. And if you like the video, don't forget to like and share the video.